What have I gotten myself into this time? Dot Hack Link is the bridge point and first entry in the aborted third arc of CyberConnect's underrated cyberpunk series. And, well, it's the actual downfall of the franchise. Though I still blame Roots and Man of America for murdering interest in it internationally, Link is the first and only legitimately bad Dot Hack game. And let me be clear, everybody hates this game. It was derided in Japan and given an overall rating of horrible even by import reviewers. Though some think that's simply because it followed GU, and GU, as I showed, was really, really damn good. But no, it was actually quite bad. For a long time, I thought it not being imported was just Band of America tightening its belt on what they brought over, and now I believe they made the right decision in skipping it. Considering my position against Band of America, considering their bad choices at dropping quality since the mid-2000s, I hope that holds some weight. For Link has major problems, simply from its inception. As the game is pretty much banking on nostalgia and acting as an anniversary entry when the series at the time was eight years old. Though in that time, they had obtained not just two or three storyline entries, but six individual stories that, while standalone, still carried on a consistent themology and world building. The seventh being Roots. You all know my issues there. And on top of that, this game also includes all of the alternate timeline media that I have covered in their own scenarios, particularly Dot Hack Zero, the one novel about Sora post sign that was never imported, which expands on Sora and Scape's relation, which proved to be relevant in GU. And also some preview stuff for Quantum and Versus the World, showing once more how far they had planned out this franchise's entries in advance of release. So, yeah, all of that had built a large roster of characters and lore to go through. It, in theory, would have given us an opportunity to properly cross over the characters from the different eras for one big event, not unlike you'd see from Project Cross Zone. And then they made the protagonist a stock cliché idiot. Yeah, this is essentially common order decayed for the Dot .hack series, only without a halfway decent protagonist. Why does Japan like having imbeciles as protagonists? It rarely turns out well, and when it does, it's because their stupidity is not the defining character trait, but an element in a greater persona. And the story itself is kind of terrible. Yet another entry in my long, long list of examples of why Japan is just plain awful with utilizing the time travel story device. But you're probably wondering how I'm reviewing it if it was never imported by Bandai of America. Well, Link has had no less than three fan translation groups, potentially more, try to complete a translation of it since it came out in 2010. But all of them eventually fail to continue updating. The most recent one by the team at Dot Hack Translate is about a third of the way to being done with the game as recording this. They say two-thirds, but having seen so much of the dialogue untranslated when I played through, it is close to 30%, with most of the main story having been collected and summarized down to a two-hour presentation by another of the groups. I'm honestly amazed it's still not done, though. Digimon Redigitize, which I've promoted petitions to import before, got its translation done last year. I only just found out about that in July. Yes, it is in my review queue. And they've been working on it less than the three years that game's been out. So, I know I'm missing a number of details because they are untranslated, and I have tried to translate them on my own to make sure what I'm getting is correct. But I really wanted to address it before I got to Quantum versus and Beyond the World. So, I'm working with what I've got here. If I get information wrong, I do apologize in advance, as it is not my intent to misrepresent anything here. But I don't plan to review it again if a complete patch ever comes. Why? This game is boring! Absolutely mind-bogglingly boring! It took me forever to gather footage for this game, as it was just so fucking tedious, I had to take breaks to keep myself from going stir-crazy! I know people say that about the core games, and okay, I will admit to them not having aged very well, so things can get monotonous gameplay-wise, which is all fixed in GU, but there's at least character investment stuff that can carry you through to the next parts. There's nothing of that nature here until hours into the game, and even then, it is exceedingly spartan and does little to make you care about the Link Origin cast members. 
I almost completely broke by the time I got to the beginning of the GU era, with Roots over 30 hours in. There is so little that's actually of interest! I have not experienced this with a game since the Fabulous Nova Crystallis. I don't normally get bored while playing RPGs, and yet there's so little tangibly here, I can't keep my attention on it for more than an hour or two before I have to go do something else. I ended up cleaning my entire house simply because I ran out of things to do after each session. It got so bad, so as to capture gameplay footage of the second half of the game, I just grabbed a completed game save file off of GameFAQs so I could acquire footage of all the cutscenes, as after you play a region through the event flags, the story cutscenes are all that remain. And even those took over 10 hours to record footage for in and of themselves, with the intermediary game completely cut out. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get through this game. Now, think about that for a second. I love .hack. It is one of my favorite franchises. The presence of my damn shelf of its media should make that apparent, alongside all of the videos I've made on its content. And I could not get through it! I feel that explains more than anything else why the fan translation of this game has gone through so many teams. Incidentally, I will not be touching on .hack Link's three-volume manga as a replacement for addressing some of the untranslated stuff. As well, I'm baffled why this was even imported. Link's manga was cancelled because, no matter how bad Link was considered, the manga was received worse! Oh, and yes, Stairs to Time, or Stairway to Time by Tomoyo Mitani and Shikaya Fukuda, what I used as an opening theme for this retrospective before I had to go DRM-free, this is where it comes from. I just always thought the song was really appropriate thematically to what I was doing and going back over and trying to show the franchise's merits and, despite how some of its entries have aged, why it's still relevant and beloved, essentially doing much of what this game was trying to do, and yet I've been doing it better. Now if only CyberConnect would have a chance to make another entry instead of yet another fighting game for a fucking Naruto or a lackluster mobile game. However, the opening sequence is not good at all the imagery not keeping pace with the music, and the art style is really ugly. The biggest attractor for how minimalist its designs of characters are, for the super detailing around it, and how apart their eyes are. It's weird because this is the only time in the game that kind of art style is present. In all of the animations and cutscenes, it depicts a stylization more consistent with Cyberkinect's other works. And pretty much from the opening, I hated our viewpoint characters. As stated, Tokyo is our generic idiot protagonist with dreams of being a hero, but without any capability or meritable elements that would allow us to believe he could be one. In fact, not even kidding, you know who he sounds exactly like? <laughs> Different actor, sure, but the exact same bad acting and characterization. And I hate Takaharu! And Saika Amagi is related to the murderer of Mia and Revive Aura Plan idiot Jotaro Amagi. He is her cousin, the man adopting her after the death of her mother in 2012, leaving her to raise herself when the Revive Aura Plan failed and left him insane. She was nine at the time. Anyways, Saika is another bitch, and I apologize for calling another character out for that when I've done so many the last year, but it's true. She treats Tokyo like utter dirt through far too much of the game after she literally is the cause of his condition. And you can't even justify it under the rule of Sundere. Mainly as she never, ever apologizes for doing this to him, or shows any kind of remorse over it. Tokyo ends up sucked into the world Revision X due to an optical disc she subs in his face on the first day she transfers into his school, and literally declares he is now her slave after leaving him absolutely no way out. Yeah, she digitizes a guy to be her tool in her exploits completely against his will, and he is too stupid to realize the connotations of that. He literally does not ever react to being subjugated and forced to go through any of this. Even though he just witnessed the game's supposed villain, Flugel, defeating the last of the Guild of the Twilight Knights, which is made up of all the heroes of the past .hack games, and led by Kite, who sacrifices himself so Tokyo won't be data drained by Flugel's weapons. And he can use data drain in the first place is baffling, as that ability previously was locked to 10, potentially 12, entities. Morganamo gone, 
As remember, she was shown using it once on Tsukasa in sign. And then the rest were the epitaphs and kites. Neither CC Corp nor any hacker were capable of recreating it, nor was anything that was not the current control of the world or an aspect of the black box AI creation files able to use it or bestow it. CC Corp ends up cobbling together a facsimile of it years later, yeah, but spoilers? It goes badly as it doesn't actually work. Granted, that's something I really should have caught when I reviewed GU+, but that more or less worked narratively by someone bad gone crazy and been on the Revive Aura plan to have insider knowledge. Plus, that dummy epitaph phase that pseudo-justifies it was already in canon, but that is in no way present here. And Jitaro Amagi's team for that in canon, well, never recovered in any capacity to even give them those kinds of materials now. Even Link still has Jotaro in a psychiatric care facility, where he remains through the end of the franchise. Though it does try to retcon the events of the Revive Aura plan from back before GU to try and justify everything, and it does so atrociously. Mainly as it disregards a fair chunk of the material that was told to us on the terminal disc. I actually went back and rewatched the terminal disc files to see if I missed something. The retcons are revolving around Jotaro Amagi that end up being plot points here. Yeah, they come out of absolute nowhere, and aren't backed up by anything preceding them with respect to Dot Hack's extensive lore. Nor is there given enough time to really explain everything in a way that it would allow such to work with everything else. My best guess for why CC Corp may develop it later would be reliant on continued research and analysis of phase data of the Epitaph PCs as they do eventually develop entities similar to epitaphs that act as automated antivirus programs. But they didn't get epitaphs to analyze from any of the active epitaph users. Reiko and Takumi, the only two of the eight employed by them, actually did resign from the company, and everything from the original Revive Aura plan outside of the Van Soya files were lost in the 2015 fire, files that remained solely in the hands of Reiko Saeki. That 11th is, of course, the Azure Kite AI, but like many, I think him a creation of auras that used the recovered but damaged character data of Kite that she managed to save, repurposed and animated for Ida extermination. And the 12th being Shugo, who played the game using Kite's actual player character, including reclaiming the bracelet from Aura, which builds justification for that interpretation of Azure Kite's origins. So he doesn't count as a separate entity either. Thus, I call bullshit on them having data drain. Other hacking abilities, since the focus of villains are hackers hired by CC Corp? I'd buy that, but even I don't think CC Corp's stupid enough in their villainy to give out a program capable of rewriting data on its most fundamental of levels to people that could then use it to screw them over. Speaking of kites, in this game, he uses the triage attacks. Even though stylistically, Azure Kite only showed those in attack animations when the games were trying to continue the deception of Azure Kite being Triage. Such was discarded after it was exposed that Triage was in fact Ovon. In the rematch of Redemption, he didn't have that attack, as he wasn't the entity creating the mark. And X Fourth, as I explained before, came out during GU's run, and was done by people that clearly were not paying attention and it is the only other place where Kite or a player resembling Kite uses the Triage Mimicry attacks once that revelation has happened. You can see where this is going. What baffles me is this was a collaborative work of the people that helmed the Dot .hack projects, with character stories from Tatsuya Hamazaki, Miyu Kawasaki, and Kirin Mori, with the storyline concepts credited to Kazunori Ito, Hiroshi Matsuyama, and Mitsuhiko Sawamura but none of them was the overall writer as far as I've been able to identify from research. Miyu Kawasaki being the one that fucked over .hack roots, Mitsuhiko Sawamura responsible for science major storylines, Kirin Mori involved in the story for the first four games, Tatsuya Hamazaki almost everything in the GU proper, and Kazunori Ito and Hiroshi Matsuyama, the supervisors involved in the entirety of the .hack franchise. I can't exactly pin down who was responsible for what part of this game's main storyline that fucks it up, so it might just be an example of too many people being involved. And I really wish someone would have translated the credits so we could have gotten further clarification on that. But since we don't have that right now, I'm left holding most of the people responsible for this franchise liable instead of a single individual. 
If anyone legitimately knows who wrote the majority of Link's story, please, please, please let me know. But the point of it is, what was before a very easy-to-follow continuity with easily bookmarked what-if and divergent story entries is now all put together in an absolute mess with an opening area that doesn't make a lick of sense from how the game starts when you have any tier of knowledge of the .hack series before this, let alone someone like me that has read, watched, played, researched, and sought to analyze the entirety of the franchise that was given to the West. No joke, I felt completely out of my depth here, despite my work of the last four years in reviewing this franchise. I mean, yeah, the series' world-building and lore has always been moving towards the technological event horizon where people become fused with technology or find themselves physically in a virtual world, but before this it was always their consciousness being ripped from their actual bodies to inhabit ones in said virtual world. Tokyo's had his actual organic body digitized into a data card and slotted into the game's servers. And this is the only time it happens that way in the entirety of the franchise. Before, it's justified in the narrative and the related world building. Here, Saika hands him a disc and he's digitized to be her minion against his will and it's never appropriately explained despite this being a major plot point the rest of the game runs off of. Maybe I missed something because the game is less than half translated, and that does not include the data logs, which this game is frustratingly reliant on for backstory details, whereas in all previous entries it provided additional flavor for stuff told to us in narrative. Seriously, taking a page from Square Enix and pulling a fucking Final Fantasy XIII? Not a good job, guys! But by the point I had to go through the game with the summarized version of the story from other translation groups, they had yet to appropriately justify this plot point, or when they did, and included stuff that straight up contradicted what could be possible due to past continuity such is reliance upon. As they tell us, this was created by, and really most of the machinations of the game coming from, Jotaro Amagi. But Jotaro Amagi's been in a catatonic state for over five years in the timeline, and didn't understand enough about the world in the first place to make this possible, let alone have the technology to convert someone's physical form into data, and onto a version of the world that existed long after the one he worked on. This is the World Revision X, which he supposedly programmed since R2 went offline. But as said before, He's been in an insane asylum since 2015, before R2 was even put together. They even try to retcon the whole mess with Ida as being his fault beyond his damage to the servers. As in, he was actually the creator of Ida. You know, I may stretch believability by saying it was a Sora Skate amalgamated remnant that was present in unison, so as to try and keep it in continuity despite real Misaki never actually remembering being Sora until late into Jiu's events, thus couldn't actually be there. But that's based on actual content in the franchise, and my efforts to keep the thinking of unison as canon, as it's really good. The real digitized stuff and I came up with that phrase to describe it before the game actually ever used that term, not even kidding with that, I expect from Digimon, Rockman and EXE, certain Kamen Rider and Sentai series, and technically Warlock Horizon, as they did enough world building with such concepts for it to be believable when it came up in those entries. Dot hack has people's consciousness being capable of trapped in a game, which at this point they begin to refer to as soul digitization. The development of AI, Malignant data transferring via electrical systems to corrupt and influence both technological and organic systems. And it has never had the kind of tech necessary in its setting for it to be possible to stuff an organic being in their entirety inside of a video game, nor ever alluding to it being possible. I am 30 minutes into this game, and yet I'm calling complete bullshit simply from how it starts. This is also what I was referring to in the danger of including past characters in your story when it's meant to focus on new ones. You risk the danger of people wanting these older characters to be the focus of the current story, and not the ones that are the actual protagonists. And Link is this in spades, as we really end up not caring for Tokyo or Saika beyond the recovery of the characters we want to see more of, 
like Alborio, Sukasa, Kite, Black Rose, Haseo, and Adali. However, as these are merely AI doppelgangers of them created from data of their exploits off of the Akashic Record, we aren't actually getting anything tangibly new that's reflective of the characters we loved who had the potential to be part of this, merely replaying parts of the series we could have experienced by watching, reading, or playing the series' other entries. Instead of with a self-insert character, we are given no reason to give a damn about. And that's one of several reasons why Link was received so badly. The framing device for reliving these exploits in this form was inferior in comparison to actually going back to the parts of the story they are recreating. Except they actually managed to tell the story of Dot Hack Roots far better than Roots itself does. No, seriously. On top of the core story events they recap, during the Roots sected missions, they include a number of sub-events that directly relate the backstory segments of most of the main cast and their interactions, which stay as the focus and doesn't end up possessing conflicting characterization from their baseline versions, at least when we're playing through Roots' section of events, once more showing what they could have done with that anime, and yet completely failed to. There's no waste of time on superfluous or drawn-out events, meaning they skip over 80% of what was actually depicted in Roots, and while Tabby is a recruitable party member, her overall involvement is downplayed throughout. The section keeps its focus on what mattered narratively, which would not be blatantly contradicted in the rest of the GU works. My only real complaint is it continues to validate her as Roots' main character, when she is the most pointless one in the entire damn franchise. So, yeah, Roots' depiction of events is ignored even in Link. And this is a game which screws up the story to almost all the preceding entries in the franchise that ends up fixing what was wrong with that specific one. Again, I must ask, how the fuck do you do that?